trail quickly okay so yeah let me jump quickly straight into it i know you guys just got the breather okay um but nonetheless around here firstly this is a topograph showing us how far away from your point of origin you guys might be from so you guys said you are from johannesburg eh? so johannesburg is just over there where you are standing sir so that's 1267 kilometers away from yeah which is the top of table mountain you guys said you guys are from new york so that's 12,562 kilometers away from this point of the mountain. 7,805 miles. 7,800, yes, 100% correct, yeah. sir. Uh, secondly, around here, this is like majority of the different types of plants. You do find at the top of Table Mountain, which stretches, like I said, from Signal Hill, Lion's Head, <coughs> all the way up to Cape Point Nature Reserve, okay? Then, the King Protea over here, that is South Africa's national flower, also during the Dutch occupation of South Africa, they used to use the nectar of the King Protea in order to create a type of a cough syrup, okay? Which was known as Bossy Stroop. Mm -hmm. So, if you had to translate Bossy Stroop into direct English, it would simply translate to bushy syrup because it was made from direct feinbos and if feinbos were to be translated into direct English it would simply translate to fine bush so because it was made from a bush they found it um, suitable to name it uh, bossy stroop okay then I told you guys those plants stretches across this mountain range and up until Cape Point so Cape Point, it's normally where people mistake the Indian and the Atlantic Ocean for meeting up. But as you can see on this map, we have the Atlantic Ocean on the western seaboard side of Cape Town, which is your um, Sultana Bay, Langaban, Camps Bay, Sea Point. All this section is the western seaboard. That's Atlantic Ocean. We have the Atlantic Ocean on the Falls Bay oh. section as well, which is your uh, Fishhook, Musenberg, Hermanus, Gans Bay, and the Whale Route basically. It's also Atlantic Ocean, <coughs> okay? So the reason why the people mistakenly think that Cape Point is the meeting ground for the Indian and the Atlantic Ocean, firstly, the restaurant's name at Cape Point. It's a bit of false information because it's known as the Two Oceans Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, secondly, the water temperature at Cape Point it differs, so it's much more milder than the water temperature on either side of the coastline in Cape Town. The western seaboard, it's much colder because of the Antarctic icebergs, which melts directly into the western seaboard section, whereas the Falls Bay coastline, it's much warmer because it's closer to a place called Cape Pagulis or Cape Pagalis, okay? So Cape Pagalis, it's about uh, three to four hundred kilometers outside of Cape Town on the east coast, and this is actually where the Indian and the Atlantic Ocean does meet up okay so that's why the atlantic ocean in the false bay ocean it's a bit warmer because it's closer to the actual meeting grounds so instead of the two oceans meeting up at cape point it's actually the two undercurrents of the oceans meeting up over there so namely your cold penguela current from the west and your warmer colors or mozambique current from the east is what meets up at cape point and Cape Point is also considered to be the most southwesternly tip on the African continent and the first place where the actual Europeans or the Portuguese discovered the inhabitants of uh, South Africa or of the Western Cape region all those years ago. So the indigenous people of the Western Cape region would obviously be the Khoisan people, okay, which used to, um, they used to roam the tops of the mountains in those days. Obviously they are still around, but they are only using their traditional way when they are doing ceremonies and things like that, guys, okay.
and then we also had obviously the apartheid era in South Africa and uh, during the apartheid era guys there was obviously lots of segregation and things like that which took place so uh, during those years the uh, apartheid government actually evicted and removed all so-called uh, non-white people who were living in the CBD area at that time by places like District 6 your gardens, Constantia, and so forth. And the people were forcefully moved to places on the Cape Flats area. So this flatlanded area, which is known as the Cape Flats district, in Capetonian terms, we would say the Capes of Flakte, okay, which is an Afrikaans word, um, of a Cape Town slang word, which translates to Cape Flats. Okay, and obviously because of the segregation laws, if you were a person of a black race during those years, you would be forced to move to places like Kayalicha, which is considered to be the biggest township in Cape Town. That's the township you guys drove past when you came from Gordons Bay, and that's the township you guys drove past when you came from the airport. Okay, also we have another township known as Langa, which is considered to be the oldest township in all of South Africa. So you are able to go on a uh, cultural tour of the Langa township as well, but you obviously do need a tour guide who is um, allocated in that area to take you on the tour of the Langa township. Then obviously if you were a person of colored um, skin, of a brown skin person as you guys might know it, in the apartheid era we were known as colored people, even up until today we are still considered colored um, people. Okay, so we were moved to places like Mitchell's Plain, Retreat and your uh, Weinberg area. If you were of Indian descent then you were moved to places like your Athlone and the Crawford area. And if you Maybe you were a colored person wanting to uh, pass over into one of the black neighborhoods at that time. You were required to walk around with a permit or a pass. Okay? <coughs> and this pass was known as a dom pass. Okay? And if you um, were not in possession of this dom pass, then you would obviously be arrested. So dom pass is another Afrikaans word. Um, if it were to be translated into uh, direct English, it would simply mean stupid pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you wow, were so um, stupid forced to leave from the colored year to go into the black year, right? Yes, then you were required to carry this uh, so-called stupid wow. pass with you basically wow. wherever you go. Okay. Yeah. So yeah guys, uh, that is basically majority of the things over here. Lastly, if you are interested in going to the penguin colony, okay, then it's also located in the False Bay coastline in between Simonstown and your Millers Point region over there guys. And then the False Bay coast, it is also home to the great white sharks, okay, and lately we have actually seen an increase in the amount of great white sharks this year or last year actually compared to four or five years ago where we actually saw a decline in the amount of sharks because of orcas which actually moved into the false bay coast and they actually eat the sharks or they eat about 15 percent of the shark out wow. okay and then they would leave the rest of the shark to basically decompose guys Okay. Do you guys have any questions with regards to that or no, anything? I appreciate you breaking the history down and breaking the connection down uh, and just you know, telling us about uh, you know, the situation of uh, different uh, racial division and, di and, and, and District 6 in the different township. No, so you're, you're, you're I, a man of wealth of knowledge. Go ahead. I, I do have a question as you, you spoke about the colors. Um, what, what is the dynamic now uh, with the, the colors and how they integrate into the rest of the population in, in Cape Town. So basically nowadays, right, there is the entire population of Cape Town basically, I would say majority of us resides within this specific area. Um, however, you can still see the backlash of the apartheid era with regards to the fact that Mitchell's Plain, for example, would still be considered a colored neighborhood. Okay. They're, they're, they're still discriminated against. Um, I wouldn't ways. say discriminated against. Um, rather, because it was only coloreds that time, that mindset 
it's still there with majority of okay. the people. So if you were to see like, um, for example, a black family move into the Mitchell's Plain area, it would um, be kind of uh, strange or so onwards. But at the same time, it wouldn't be strange because of the new South Africa, which we are living in. And um, nowadays you actually see that um, coloreds are starting to move into black neighborhoods. Black people is moving into colored neighborhoods. Even you have white people who previously um, were only, well, they were the elite, so to say, during the apartheid era. And even nowadays, they are also mingled into the Cape Flats district. So it's not to say that it's only that uh, race living there now. There is a mixture, and, but obviously you can still see the poverty in the certain areas because of the backlash. So if you example in the Kayalicha area, then you would mainly see uh, shacks and things like that. And obviously the people's families grew and grew. So the government of that time did not expect that the people would actually um, find a life in that specific area. So there wasn't um, finances, so to say, by our enough finances put aside, I would say, for um, sponsorship and that even though there are certain projects and that um, in order to try and uplift the communities nowadays. Okay, thank okay. you for your explanation, I appreciate that. Yes, man, you're a man, wealth of knowledge, man. I really appreciate you sharing, uh, sharing and breaking it down. So, family, yes, you know, it's uh, one of those things where when we travel, we uh, our goal is to learn about the history and the culture. Yeah. The favorite, the, the co colored people, and if you got if they want to go into a black neighborhood, they give them a pass, a compass, otherwise known as the stupid pass, because you'd be stupid to live in a colored neighborhood, which is much better than black neighborhood, and then you're going into the black neighborhood, so you're stupid. It's unbelievable, because you know, what, uh, brother, uh, you know, it's uh, so you know, us being from like mainly the East Coast, you know, it's the same level of this discrimination, mixing and confusion, and only only difference in America would more consider you this you know, brother or sister, you know, we wouldn't. So it, the terminology, or sometimes they go by, you know, whether it's, I won't say biracial or multicultural, but you know. Like, it's, a, it's the same struggle. Um, and also where uh, slavery is concerned, I know slavery is also very big in the States, mm -hmm. even here in South Africa. Um, okay, slavery also was very big. That's actually how the colored community started in uh, Cape Town. So this was all during the Dutch East India spice trade when the Dutch people went around the continent of Africa in order to get to places like Malaysia, Indonesia and so forth for spices and tobaccos. So when they stopped over in that colonies, they basically captured Malaysian slaves of the company of the Dutch people at that time. Then they would use these slaves obviously to pack the ships and whatever it is. They would bring these people over to Cape Town, they would offload these Malaysian or whatever Indonesian slaves here, then from here they would load the black slaves on and they would take the black slaves over to the states or so or to wherever it is where they went to. And the main reason for this was because they actually feared an uprising. If a black people, they knew the land at that time basically, so they knew how to uprise in that land and that's how the Dutch people actually would break down the spirit of the um, so-called uh, tribal people of that time. Okay, nonetheless guys, plants is also one of the main reasons we are here. This specific plant, you can actually have a lovely smell of it. It's quite a spicy plant guys, okay. So I'm going to give that one over to you guys over there. So this there plant go. over here guys. So there you go family, the journey continues. And uh, we'll share and some more of the mountains with you. And we appreciate our tour guide just breaking down some of the history and the culture so we can be more educated as a people.